Hi, I'm Helen. Before we dive into this wild ride of a story, do me a favor, will you? Hit that like and subscribe button for more stories like this. All right, let's get started. My day began like any other in our modest suburban home, but it quickly spiraled into chaos with the unexpected arrival of my mother-in-law, Karen, and her new boyfriend, Rick. They waltzed in as if they owned the place, and before I knew it, Karen had decided they were taking over the master bedroom. Yes, you heard that right. I was relegated to the guest room in my own house. Helen, be a dear and set up the guest room for yourself. Rick and I will need your bedroom, Karen declared, as if it was the most natural thing in the world. I couldn't believe it. I looked at my husband, John, hoping for some support, but he just shrugged and muttered, You know how she is, Helen. Let's just keep the peace. The peace, I thought, fuming. There was no peace in being displaced in my own home, but I bit my tongue and did as I was told, a storm brewing inside me. That evening, things took an even worse turn. Karen cornered me in the kitchen, her eyes blazing with a mix of suspicion and accusation. I know what you're up to with Rick, she hissed, her finger jabbing in my direction. Don't think I haven't noticed the way you look at him. I was stunned. Are you serious, Karen? That's absurd. I have no interest in your boyfriend. But she wasn't having any of it. Don't lie to me, Helen. I know a homewrecker when I see one. As we argued, John walked in, and I thought he would come to my defense. Instead, what he said next felt like a punch in the gut. Helen, Mom thinks you're having an affair with Rick. And well, I think we should do a DNA test for Danny, just to clear things up. I couldn't believe my ears. My own husband, questioning the paternity of our son because of his mother's baseless accusations. John, are you serious? You want a DNA test? You don't trust me? My voice broke, the hurt and betrayal washing over me in waves. He wouldn't meet my eyes. It's just to put Mom's mind at ease, Helen. You understand, right? No, John, I don't understand. I can't believe you doubt me like this. The argument escalated, with Karen smirking in the background like she had won some twisted game. I felt alone, cornered, and utterly betrayed. That night, as I lay in the guest bed, my mind raced with anger and sadness. How had my life come to this? Betrayed in my own home, by my own husband, all because of his toxic mother's false accusations. But as I lay there, a resolve began to form within me. They wanted to play dirty? Fine. But they had no idea who they were messing with. I wasn't just going to prove my innocence. I was going to make sure they regretted ever doubting me. This was war, and I was ready to fight back. After the nightmare at home, I needed an escape, so I headed over to my friend Maggie's place. She's always been my rock. You look like you've been through a storm, Helen, Maggie said, handing me a cup of coffee as I slumped onto her couch. I spilled everything. Karen's wild accusations, John's betrayal, the whole mess. Maggie listened, her eyebrows knitting together in concern. This is insane, Helen. You need to protect yourself. Have you thought about getting legal advice? The idea hadn't crossed my mind, but as she said it, something clicked. I needed to fight back, but smartly. You're right, Maggie. I can't just sit back and take this. I'll start documenting everything. Every snide remark, every intrusion, everything. And the DNA test? She asked cautiously. I sighed. I'll do it. Not for John or his mom, but for me and my son, to clear my name. The next day was a whirlwind. I started writing down every incident with Karen and Rick every conversation, every argument. I felt like a detective in my own home, collecting evidence against my own family. Then came the lawyer's appointment. The office was all polished wood and leather, and I felt out of place with my stack of scribbled notes. Mr. Dawson, my lawyer, was a stern-looking man with a surprisingly gentle voice. So, Mrs. Thompson, what brings you here today? I laid it all out. The accusations, the forced DNA test, my husband's lack of support. Mr. Dawson listened, jotting down notes. What you're describing is a clear case of defamation and invasion of privacy. We can take this to court, especially with the documentation you've started. What about the DNA test? I asked, my voice barely above a whisper. If it's as you say, and your child is indeed your husband's, which I don't doubt, it'll work in your favor. It'll prove their allegations false and strengthen your case. Walking out of that office, I felt a weight lift off my shoulders. I had a plan, I had support, and I was ready to stand up for myself. 
A week later, I went for the DNA test. The clinic was sterile and unwelcoming, a stark contrast to the turmoil of emotions I was feeling. As the nurse gently swabbed Danny's cheek, I held his hand, promising silently to protect him from all this madness. When I got home, John was waiting, looking nervous. I couldn't even look at him. The test is done, John. We'll have the results in a few days. Are you happy now? He started. Helen, I... I just wanted to make sure... Make sure of what, John? That your wife isn't a liar? That your son is actually yours? He didn't answer, and I didn't wait for one. I walked past him, holding our son a little tighter, my heart a little firmer. I wasn't just fighting for my dignity now. I was fighting for my son. For our future. And I wasn't going to back down. After the DNA test, I couldn't shake off this nagging feeling about Rick, Karen's boyfriend. Something about him just didn't add up. So, I decided it was time to dig a little deeper. I made an appointment with a private investigator, Mike. As I walked into Mike's office, it felt like I was stepping into a detective novel. The room was filled with shelves of files, and a large desk cluttered with papers. Mike himself was a no-nonsense guy, with a sharp gaze that seemed to see right through you. So, what's the situation? Mike asked, leaning back in his chair. I explained everything. Karen's wild accusation, Rick's shady demeanor, my husband's wavering trust. Mike listened intently, nodding occasionally. All right, Mrs. Thompson. It sounds like you've got quite a situation. I'll start digging into this Rick character, see what I can find. A few days later, Mike called me with an update, and let's just say, it was a doozy. Mrs. Thompson, you were right to be suspicious. Rick has a history of scamming older women. He's got multiple aliases and a record of fraud. I felt a mix of vindication and disgust. I thanked Mike and hung up. It was time to confront Karen. I found her in my kitchen, as if she owned the place, making herself a sandwich. The sight of her filled me with a burning anger. Karen, we need to talk. About Rick. She rolled her eyes. What now, Helen? I slammed the papers Mike had given me on the counter. This is who your precious Rick really is. A scam artist. He's been conning women like you for years. Karen's face went from smug to pale as she scanned the documents. This. This can't be right. Oh, it's right, Karen. And you brought this man into my home, accused me of having an affair with him. Her hands trembled as she looked up from the papers. I... I had no idea. Just then, John walked in. What's going on here? I thrust the papers at him. Your mother's boyfriend is a fraud. He's been using her. John's eyes widened as he read. Then he turned to Karen. Mom, is this true? Did you know? Karen was at a loss for words, her usual bravado gone. This ends now, Karen. Rick is not welcome here anymore. And you? You need to leave too. You've caused enough trouble. For once, John looked determined, standing up to his mother. Karen didn't argue. She just gathered her things quietly and left. After she was gone, I turned to John. I hope you realize how serious this was, how much your doubt hurt me. John looked down, ashamed. I'm sorry, Helen. I should have trusted you. I... I don't know how to make this right. I sighed. Start by standing by your family, John. Your real family. Me and Danny. He nodded. I will, Helen. I promise. That night, I felt a small sense of victory. It wasn't just about exposing Rick or getting Karen out of my house. It was about taking control, standing up for myself. I wasn't going to be a victim in my own home. No, I was going to fight back, every step of the way. After the turmoil of the past few weeks, the day finally arrived when the DNA test results were due. I felt a mix of anxiety and anger. John and I were sitting awkwardly in our living room, the tension between us thick enough to cut with a knife. The email notification pinged, and my heart skipped a beat. I opened it my hands trembling slightly. There it was, black on white. Danny was indeed John's son. I let out a breath I didn't realize I was holding. Well? John's voice was tentative, almost scared. He's your son, John. The test confirmed it. Not that I needed a test to tell me that. There was a moment of silence, and then John broke down, his face in his hands. I'm so sorry, Helen. I don't know why I doubted you. I wanted to be angry to scream and shout, but seeing him like this, all I felt was exhaustion. Your mom's accusations, they... They really got to you, huh? He nodded. I let her get into my head. 
It's no excuse. I should have trusted you, Helen. The next step was the mediation meeting with our lawyer, Mr. Dawson. We needed to figure out where we stood legally and how to move forward. At the meeting, Mr. Dawson was straight to the point. The DNA results work in your favor, Helen. It discredits any allegations made by your mother-in-law. But there are bigger issues at hand. Trust has been broken. How do you wish to proceed? I looked at John, who seemed smaller somehow, beaten down. I want to make it clear, John. No more false accusations. No more disrespect. If we're going to make this work, things need to change. Starting with your mother. John nodded. I understand. I'll set boundaries with her. I... I don't want to lose you or Danny. Mr. Dawson interjected. And what about Rick? He's not our concern anymore. He was a scam artist using my mother-in-law. She's dealing with that fallout now. There was a long discussion about potential legal actions against Karen and Rick, but I was more focused on John. His realization of his mother's toxic influence was the first step, but we had a long road ahead. As we left the office, John reached for my hand. Helen, I know I messed up. I want to fix this. For us. For Danny. I squeezed his hand, not ready to let go of all the hurt, but willing to start working towards healing. We'll see, John. Actions speak louder than words. We went home that day with a semblance of peace, a fragile thing that I was determined to strengthen. My son's future, our family's future, depended on it. The air in our home had shifted. It was time for changes. Big changes. I sat down with John in our living room, the room where so much had unraveled, and where I hoped we would start to mend things. I've been thinking a lot about us, about our family, I began, and if we're going to move forward, we need rules. Boundaries. Especially with your mother. John nodded. I understand, Helen. She's... She crossed a line. What do you have in mind? For starters, she needs to respect our space. No more just dropping by unannounced. And no more staying over. He agreed without hesitation. You're right. I'll talk to her. And, Helen, I'll stand by whatever decision you make. Then came the next big step, dealing with Karen's boyfriend, Rick. With the evidence gathered and the backing of my lawyer, Mr. Dawson, we filed for a restraining order against him. The court day was tense. As we presented our case, citing Rick's fraudulent activities and the turmoil he'd caused, the judge nodded solemnly. The gavel came down. Restraining order granted against Richard Nolan, a.k.a. Rick. Leaving the courtroom, I felt a weight lift off my shoulders. Rick was out of our lives for good. But more than that, it felt like a victory a sign that things could really change for the better. John and I started attending couples counseling. Those sessions were far from easy. There were tears, there were raised voices, but there were also moments of understanding, of reconnecting. We were learning to communicate, to support each other. And how do you feel about that, Helen? The counselor would ask. It's hard, I'd admit. Trust was broken, but I see him trying, and that means something. At home, things were calmer quieter. Karen kept her distance, respecting the boundaries we'd set. Danny was happier, too, his laughter filling the house once again. It wasn't a fairy tale ending. There were still challenges, moments of doubt, but we were working through them, together. We were building something new, something stronger. The months following the court order and the start of counseling brought a new sense of stability to our lives. John and I, with every session, were learning to rebuild the trust that had been shattered. It wasn't easy, but there was a genuine effort from both sides, and that made all the difference. Our counselor, Dr. Ellis, had a way of getting to the heart of our issues. It's about understanding and forgiveness, not forgetting, she'd say. You're building a new foundation together. John was really putting in the work. He started standing up to Karen Moore, ensuring she respected our boundaries. It was a relief to see him finally stepping out of her shadow. At home, Danny was thriving his laughter a constant reminder of what we were fighting for. John and I began spending more quality time together. Simple things like family dinners and movie nights. It wasn't just about repairing our marriage. It was about strengthening our family unit. One evening, as we sat on the couch after putting Danny to bed, John took my hand. Helen, I know I can never undo what I've done, but I promise you, I'll spend every day trying to make it right. I looked at him, seeing the sincerity in his eyes. I know, John. 
and I appreciate it. We've come a long way. And we had. The betrayal, the hurt. It was all still there, a part of our story. But it didn't define us anymore. We were moving forward, learning from the past but not letting it hold us captive. As for Karen, she was slowly becoming a less daunting presence in our lives. She called occasionally, checking in but keeping her distance. I think she realized that her actions had consequences, and if she wanted to be a part of our lives, she had to respect our rules. Life, with all its ups and downs, had taught me a powerful lesson, the strength of resilience, the importance of standing up for yourself and your loved ones. The storm had passed, but it left me stronger, more determined, and with a clearer vision of what I wanted our family life to be. In a way, I was grateful for the ordeal, it opened my eyes to the changes that needed to be made and gave me the courage to make them. Our family, though once on the brink of falling apart, was now building a future on a foundation of respect, understanding, and love. And that's the end of my journey, folks. Thanks for following along. Remember, you have the strength to face any storm and come out stronger. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe for more stories. Helen signing off. Now that Helen's story has concluded, Here's a thought-provoking question for all of you. If you were in Helen's shoes, would you have given John a second chance, considering how he initially doubted her due to his mother's influence? This situation really tests the limits of trust and forgiveness in a relationship. Share your thoughts in the comments, and if you enjoyed this story, don't forget to hit like and subscribe for more content like this.